by Director of Race, Keith Rowe. Keith, how are you? Great, thanks. Good to see you. Keith, we're just getting a, a feel of race and, and what it provides, and we'll get through that in a, in a while. Hard to believe, um, looking at the, at the stats, 48 years in existence, um, brainchild of uh, not leaving anyone out, I suppose, Stan Cosgrove and Michael Osborne back in the day, and um, the O'Sullivans. There was loads of people along, along yeah. the way. Tell us about the journey. Yeah, it's a wonderful story, really. I mean, we're standing outside Curra House here on, on the edge of the Curra, and uh, a great idea, if you like, an inspiration all those years ago to do something for people in the industry, to offer something. There was nothing really in place for young people coming up here with their head full of dreams and not much support and a lot of fallout. So some very good people, great vision, great inspiration. They'd nothing to start with. They were looking at a semi-derelict building uh, on, on a little bit of free land on the National Stud. And over the time with the effort, um, uh, you know, Derek O'Sullivan's drive and ambition uh, got to what's now effectively a world leading racing academy. So, I mean, it just shows you small acorns, uh, you know, can sometimes grow. Absolutely. And we're just even looking at that small acorns, what we had even last weekend, Champions Weekend across the road. Previous graduates, we have Johnny Murtha training the, the, the ledger winner. We have uh, Lee Roach winning the big sales race. Dusty having a, a double on the weekend. And Chris mm. Hayes winning the grade one. Um, yeah. And that's only the flat lads. You know, it's just brilliant. Yeah, no, it's great. And I mean, even as you, as you mentioned those names, I suppose it's an indication of the cycles. You know, the time goes. So, I mean, Johnny's now gone full cycle. He's now training and taking on graduates. And he's training the next generation himself, you know. And I think that's really the, the importance of something like race is that, and what was started, is that it's the ongoing legacy because it's just like a ripple effect as it goes out. So you hope that more and more people get introduced to racing, get trained up well, uh, develop good, long careers, and they buy into the whole idea of training and education and bringing on the next generation and uh, you know while you mention all those names and they're all you know perf perform brilliantly well but I mean in our eyes we'd be just as as conscious and as proud of the fact that there'd be a young lad there from Moy Ross and Limerick for example who had you know had two rides in Champions Weekend up in the Curry, you know as well and a uh, seven pound claimer so there, you know, there's loads of stories, there's loads of individuals, and every one of them is important. And I'm sure throughout, if you're to go through Champions Weekend, there's so many lads and lasses and working in yards and box drivers, and it just doesn't, it doesn't end there. And we look back to Cheltenham last year, and we've the likes of Sean Flanagan, and we have Brian Hughes, UK champion yeah. jockey. They all start here as well, so it's not just flat only. It's, it's, it's June. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's very important and sometimes gets missed as well because uh, there, people still refer to race as the Apprentice Centre a lot, uh, whereas it's really been the racing academy for a long time now. And I suppose the, the change in aim is significant because it, it's a much broader based thing. Uh, so even the youngsters who come in here who are starting on this trainee jockey programme, we know from, from day one that roughly half of them are going to be going the National Hunt route anyway, for starters. You know, whereas back in the day, it would have been a very strong focus just on the flat. Now it's, it's much broader. And just it's broader again uh, to look at the, the other courses that are provided. There's horsemen courses here, there's exercise rider course here, amateur schooling, racing secretary, um, equine transport, the list goes on. It's not just confined to uh, jockeys per se. No, it's not. And I think that's a big thing. So the industry as a whole is really, I think, woken up to the fact that we're in a, we're, you know, we're in a, a fight for staff, for talent. You know, we're an industry, we need people. We, we can struggle to attract people into the industry. And the world of now is hugely different to the world of when race was set up in 1973. So we have to adapt to the times. And that means that we have to be able to offer people a bit more, you know? So the days are gone when you can just take somebody in and expect them to stay working, doing the same thing all their life. And it's brilliant. We're going to head on down now and meet, meet the, 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 some of the students and some of the, uh, and some of the fantastic teachers are there. And even a name I seen earlier on as we were passing through Royal Diamond, a horse that's been retired yeah. here, one in Irish St. Ledger across the road a couple of years ago this weekend. And great to see those in New Lease of Life and they're passing on their, their knowledge to the new, new Yeah, students. and it's wonderful. And I think it's really important as well because one of the other aspects for the industry at the moment is around um, people's understanding of the level of care, professional care of horses that is in the industry. And we would hope to be sort of showcasing that as well. And, and you know what do you do with retired racehorses well this is a really positive outlet for them we have about 40 retired thoroughbreds here and it's wonderful to see them fit and healthy and you know contributing to the next generation absolutely brilliant Keith we'll head on in now and, and see the fantastic facilities you have thanks great thank you very much these guys are on week two now it's a 42 week course um, it started last Monday and once they got the grips with the barns the horses the routine you know, they quickly, they quickly slot into it and everything, everything starts to run uh, a lot smoother. And we aim to have them in the yards probably sort of from back end of November. Um, you know, get them out on, in placements on, on the weekends. 
and hopefully their experience in the hours will, will, will help them to progress. Um, it's all coming along nicely. We've had good weather so far. Uh, no problems with the horses or, or with anything else. Everything, everything is, is going to plan and you know, long may continue. And Caitlin, uh, what made you come to the apprentice school and enrol in, in this nearly year long course? Well, I've always wanted to come here for experience and to get more interested in horses and to improve on my riding. And I know we're, it's only a short amount of time in, yeah. but you definitely think you're going to learn a lot while definitely. you're here? Definitely. I've learned a lot only in two weeks. And you've done a little bit of riding out with William McCreary, so yeah. um, I take it late and they don't know what yard they'll be sent to yet then, do they? No, no, it's not set in stone. Um, okay. you know, and it might change a number of times during the course. We'll okay. see what Good. you know best suits the individuals and, yes. and what suits the yards, you know, toward yeah. different uh, you know the, the needs that they both have, you know. And Caitlin, you must be looking forward to that part, getting sent out to a yard on the curve. Definitely, yeah. Can't Any particular wait. yard you'd like to go to or? Um I wouldn't mind. Anywhere really, yeah. Okay, good. And Shane, um, what made you enrol in the apprentice course? Well I always sort of wanted to be a jockey here. This last while I started with Anthony McCann then and I took over from Oliver Brady. He um, I went down there and started mucking out with him and doing generally our duties below him. And then he sort of kicked on, he sort of let me up on a horse and then one we came two and then that's where I really got the love of it. And I said down here, Anthony put me forward for this to bring on my riding and skills and just learn more about a horse and that. And then back home on weekends. So back sure home, all back home weekends. Good, and what weight are you? About 88. Eight. And with the plan then going forward, I'll, the end of the course, flat or jumping? I'll probably go over jumps. At the end, in the, I might get a season in the flat, hopefully. Okay, good. And what would, what's the plan for you, Caitlin? What would you like to...? Um, I'd like to try the flat, see how I go okay. with that. Good. Yeah. And you have a great teacher here in Leighton Aspel. Yeah. Um, has roads. I don't know how many winners Leighton. There's a lot of winners, but uh, grand national winners and everything, so no better man. And mm. Like other people are here on you, Connor and Paddy Flood, so you'll learn from the best anyway. Definitely, yeah. Good. Um, in terms of when they go to the yards late and then what's your job then, because you're not as hands-on with them then, so what, what, what's the important thing for you then when they come back from the yards then? Well, again, that they're learning the, the job properly. You know, we will be doing our very best to you know, make them as prepared as possible for, for all the yards. And hopefully we'll, we'll be placing them correctly. Um, and hopefully the yards will have time to spend time with them because again they'll be in a new new environment uh, and you know hopefully they'll be on you know allocated horses you know to suit them and a horse that will improve them and hopefully we can get them at a good standard where they can slot into a yard you know maybe like a busy Saturday morning it's often work mornings in the yards and hopefully they'll be up to up to ride and work at the end of November and, and progress you know from from Saturday to Saturday um, through the rest of the course and a quick bit on yourself Leighton, are you enjoying this new role? Very much so. Um, it's a shock to the system now when the, guy, the guys all arrived. I was very much looking forward to the course and I'm, I'm very much enjoying it, but it's so, so busy. But, um, you know, you're, we're, we're dealing with, you know, fresh, fresh young faces every morning that are, are, are willing to learn and very keen to learn and they've been, they've been great fun to deal with so far. Body weight high, he never moved his hands. The horse naturally shortened because he was a bit negative. He naturally shortened, popped the fence, perfect. Robbie never lost balance, momentum, anything. That was a real good school there, okay? Yeah. We want to replicate it if we can. That was as close to perfection as you can get, honest to God. Yeah. Yeah, everything. Uh, I love the way when the horse, when there was no stride there, you want him to shorten, like we we're talking about, you brought your body weight high. Yeah. You're negative, you're encouraging him to shorten, you've done it, perfect. And when you've seen a stride, you got close to the saddle, excellent. Yeah, hands never moved, very good school. Well done, boy. Smashing. See, see Rachel's style, guys? She's got that event, show jumping style. See the way she's very forward, mid jump. That's fine, and, and 
Liam Healy watching you is beautiful on the picture, uh, but unfortunately, if that horse hits that fence or stumbles at the back of it, or a rider comes across you and hits you, you're leaving yourself very liable to get unseated because you're, you're in that vulnerable stage when you're too far forward. I'd love her to be in a half a foot further back. Her approach is good, her hands are good, but if she was a half foot further back, her ass further back sitting in the saddle, she was perfect there. So everything was perfect about it, but you see that, see that little show jumping type style? Yeah, we don't, we don't really want that. We want to be half a foot further back, a little bit more upright with your head up, look, looking what's, what's coming, uh, in front of you. No, 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 no. 99.9% of that was beautiful. Honest to God, your approach is beautiful. The only thing I could knock you on, and I was just saying to the guys there, you, you're, you've got that show jumping style where you're really going forward. Yeah. And when you're forward like that, you're, you're unbelievably vulnerable to getting unseated or getting unshipped. Because, yeah. like, the jumping, the technique and the approach and the, the jump mid is beautiful, but you're out there and you're a little bit in limbo. If that horse stumbled or a jockey came and bounced off you, or even if you just caught the top of the fence and jolt, and kind of jolted you, you're going to come off him, you know? Yeah. So <clears throat> I'd love you to be a half a foot further back and your ass sitting more in the saddle, okay? Yeah. That looks that new mobile unit, uh, Dave. As you can see, we've Caitlin on it here. It's uh, completely mobile. Everything's been recorded on the TVs, so we can go back, play back, whatever we want. We've got Apple TV in it as well, uh, so if you want to simulate a race, we can stick it on the, the TV. And also this simulator has all sensors all over it for balance, position, for hitting it with a whip. And uh, yeah, it's basically, a, it's a great tool, you know, for teaching the likes of Caitlin or the complete beginners how to hold reins or change their stick or else, you know, for professionals to just really tidy up. And um, what's the first thing that you're saying to the students now? What's the most important thing, obviously, is just good, good position. Yeah, body position is to start with, you know. Yeah. Nice bit of pressure on their heel, to the knee, to the hip. You can see Caitlin's very naturally... Um, very tidy. Very, very tidy, very yeah. Very, very tidy. Not everybody's like that when they start on it, no, you know. But that doesn't matter. It's doesn't not matter. Style either, no, it's not about style. It's all about balance and finesse with your horse, you know. This is not... It's not very light riding a horse in a gallop, but it's, you know, it's a real tool to strengthen the muscles you need for balance and for posture and for tidiness, you know, and teaching you good techniques so when you get on a horse, it gets very easy. What about now when we go a little bit faster and Caitlin's then gonna start pushing the horse then? So. Yeah, we're just turning on a little gear here. Caitlin's just gonna shorten up her reins for me. Good, she's gonna pull her stick into the left. Good, she's gonna tidy up her reins again for me back into the right hand nice and smooth you see how smooth Caitlin's done that now and see where her body position is you can't get much better than that for a rider you know this girl has worked really hard on her position and we're only two weeks into the course so we're not getting stick happy yet we're just getting reins and the very basics done right before we start on you know how strong we should hit a horse how many times we should hit a horse we get our basics right first and that's it Caitlin, you can pull your stick into your left hand again for me. Good girl. Well, you know, from riding yourself, Paddy, for so many years, riding so many big winners, pulling that stick through is so important, isn't it? Yeah, well, look, if you look back at Ruby Walsh, how quickly to do it. You know, it was the best in the world. And um, it's it's the winning and losing of a tight finish and fitness on top of it. So And being strong in both being hands. Being strong in both hands. And that last four of a race is where jockeys tire. You know, we're all good and we can squeeze a horse, get them to their full tilt, but to keep a horse going for that last furlong, you need massive fitness nowadays. And um, you know, we're gonna be working with these kids for 10 months and they're gonna be fit as fiddles coming out here. But also, as I said, this new mobile unit, it is mobile and it's free for, for, for the first year or so. And uh, we're gonna get on the road as much as we can. Okay, Caitlin, you can have a little rest, good girl. And you mentioned to me earlier, we'll see in Castletown, Gagan in three weeks time at the point Yeah, I'll be there in three weeks time and there's a novice riders race there and I'm hoping to grab a few of them guys and um, we'll do a little bit of work on the stick position um, but mostly on the stick. Them guys have licenses now and um, you know the way the world is going Davey. Um, the stick is a, is a big issue so if we don't do something about it now we could lose it in the future. How do you find this Caitlin? Gets tired on the legs after a while. <laughs> That's what it's all about, strengthening up those legs isn't yeah. it? Yeah, 